One of the main goals of ACDF is to join two vertebrae together by encouraging bone to grow between them. Strain-based fusion assessment combines the physical and x-ray evaluations of this bone growth. By taking precise measurements from x-rays acquired when the patient bends forward and backward, we can calculate the strain across the disc space. If the measured strain is low enough, it means the bones are stable and likely fuse successfully. When the strain is too high, it means the bones haven't fully healed or fused together yet. Let's take a look at a real world example. In this case, we'll explore how this method was applied to patient treated with ACDF. In this case, we'll see how strain data helped guide the clinical team's decision making, ensuring a more personalized and accurate approach to the patient's recovery. The strain in flexion or extension is presented for the first time in this manuscript and you can see this measurement diagram and associated formula that are used to calculate strain in any given position. The protocol depends on the maximum strain measured and it is outlined here as follows. A level may be classified as fused if rotation is less than one degree and strain is less than five percent. If rotation is greater than 2 degrees and strain is greater than 8%, then diagnosis of pseudarthrosis may be applied. And then there is this gray zone where the rotation may be between 1 and 2 degrees or the strain is between 5 and 8%. In such a scenario, the protocol recommends that image stabilization be used to visualize any residual motion and make the final diagnosis. I'm going to use results from Spine Camp and a standard DICOM viewer to demonstrate how to apply this protocol. So here we have a web-based PAX that's hosted by Intellirad, and it's been preloaded with two sample patients that have been treated with ACDF. The spine camp results have already been obtained from the fully automated AI software as a medical device. We're gonna go ahead and focus in on the first study here. Click the images icon. You can see here that we have a flexion image on the left and an extension image on the right and a two level ACDF. In the ribbon on the left, you can see that we have spine camp data already obtained. It includes stabilized images for every vertebral body from C2 to C7, as well as a spine camp cervical EFE report. If we click over here in the right view pane and then select the FE report, we can visualize the angular motion and strain that is required to apply the protocol. If we think about the protocol and look at the data here that is presented for C5, C6, go straight across this line, you can see that there is half a degree of angular motion, 0.2% strain measured at the anterior margin and 5.1% strain measured at the posterior margin. So in this scenario, we have strain greater than 5%. That means we need to go look at the stabilized imaging to make our final diagnosis. To do that, we'll simply just click over here in the left, plane, left view pane and select the C6 stabilized imaging. This stabilized imaging is generated by a fully automated AI software as a medical device. It automatically labels the images. You can see extension labeled here. And with my mouse wheel, I can toggle to the flexion view. With my mouse wheel, I can flip back and forth and easily visualize the motion that is occurring. We can see here that all vertebral bodies have been labeled and that the stabilized vertebral body is annotated with blue landmarks. C6 is held constant in space between flexion extension, which enables us to really appreciate the motion that is occurring or not occurring at this level. And in this scenario, I see very, very little motion, if anything, to be concerned with. And, and I'd be inclined to say that there's um, a solid fusion here, no residual motion that's indicative of pseudoarthrosis. If we move forward to the next level, C6, C7, and we look at the data once again across the C6, C7 row over here in the spine camp report, we very quickly can see there's quite a bit of angular motion, 3.3 degrees, and the strain measured at the anterior and posterior margins is both over 10%. 
So with that information alone, we can be confident that this level has residual motion that's indicative of pseudoarthrosis. Just for the sake of visualizing it, we can pull in the C7 stabilized imaging, zoom in, and view the quality of motion that's actually happening at a level that was treated with ACDF. And you can really see here how the screw is toggling. You can see the lucency around the screw and the plate lifting off in the vertebral body and the rocking back and forth of C6 with respect to C7 to verify that diagnosis of pseudoarthrosis. I hope you found this real world example helpful. Please reach out with any questions and thank you for joining me.